Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Skylum Software updated Luminar Neo to version 1.21.1. They're calling it their Big Fall Update. In this video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Luminar Neo. Very quickly, I'd like to mention that in the description below this video, I'll have a link to Skylum's website. If you click on that link and purchase anything from them, I will receive a commission on the sale. Also included in the description below this video are two different discount codes. One of the discount codes is for $10 off. The other discount code is a percentage off. I'm not sure how much, but I believe it's 10%. The reason why I'm including both discount codes is that if you purchase something for less than $100, you're better off using the $10 off discount code if, in fact, the other discount code is for 10% off. So use whichever discount code will save you the most money. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use both discount codes at the same time. Now, when you open up Luminar Neo, if the update is available to you, it should prompt you to update right away. If it doesn't, go up to, if you have a Mac, the Luminar Neo menu and down to check for updates. If you have a PC, I believe check for updates is under the help menu. Once you do that and you start the update process, Luminar Neo will prompt you to update your catalog and to back up your old catalog. It will need to update the catalog for this version of Luminar Neo. And once you do all that and you finally open up this newest version of Luminar Neo, what you will notice is that under the search bar, there will be a progress bar because this version of Luminar Neo has something they're calling smart search. This is AI powered search. What is happening when you open up Lu this newest version of Luminar Neo for the first time is it's going through each of your images and finding various elements in those images so that it could easily catalog them and help you find them faster. For example, let's say I want to find all of the images in my Luminar Neo catalog that have statues in them. If I click on the search bar, I'll get it in the middle here and then I could just type statue and you can see it's immediately telling me I have 84 images of statues in my Luminar Neo catalog and I'll click on it and there are all the images of statues that are in my Luminar Neo catalog. If I'd like to search for something else again I could just click on the search bar. It will remember my recent searches. You can see they're right there. You have the option to clear it if you'd like. I'm going to search for waterfalls and then click right here. You can see I have 15 images of waterfalls and you can see there are waterfalls. So AI powered search, it's called smart search. It's a welcome addition in my view uh, in Luminar Neo. And what I mentioned is when you open it up for the first time, it will go through each of your images and it takes a few minutes to do that. Of course, it depends on how many images you have in your Luminar Neo catalog. It won't do that again but when you add new folders or you import new images into Luminar Neo, the next time you open it, it will catalog those new images. So that might take, you know, a few seconds. You'll just notice a progress bar at the bottom of this search window. It does do it in the background. So you could do other things. It's not going to hold you up at all. Now, there's other ways you could search too. Let me go back to all photos here. If I go at the top, this is new. Click on this drop down and let's just say I want to find all images that were taken with my Nikon Z7 II. There, there's all images I took with my Nikon Z7 II. I could add to it if I go to the filters again and let's say I go to focal length and I want to find all images I took at 24 millimeters. And there are images that I shot at 24 millimeters. See how I have less now. And let's add to it again. I could go up here and say all images I shot with ISO of 64. And you can see, I don't know if it made less, but because I usually do shoot at 64 if possible. But you can see that you could add filters. I added three different filters and I drilled down to uh, this many images. And if you want to go back to all photos, just click up there and go back to all photos. And there's all your photos. Um, also, you may have noticed um, that there's some new information included. Meaning if you look at an image, you'll notice at the top is the file name. You can see it's a raw file here. Also, there's star ratings. So if you like to give something a star rating, let's say you just click on it and give it three stars. Or you could use the keyboard shortcuts, uh, your number keys, basically. So if I want to give this one star, just hit one on the keyboard. If I want to give it five stars, give it five. If I want to get rid of all the stars, click.
click on zero. Here's the pick flag and the reject flag. So if you'd like to give it a favorite, hit the P key. If you'd like to unpick it, hit the U key. If you'd like to reject it, hit the X key. And if you'd like to clear that rejection, just hit the U key again to unpick it. Of course, you could click right on anything you'd like. If you don't like all this information showing, go over to this drop down right here and go to minimal view. And then the information will only show when you hover your cursor over the image. So that's an option. I kind of like the detailed view, so I'm going to keep that on uh, there. Um, let's see. Oh, over on the left. In the past, um, it would put your folders in order that you added them. You'll notice that my folders are in alphabetical order. That's because you now could change the order of your folders. Just go to this drop down and you could say, let's go to photo count. And you'll notice that folders with the least number of images are at the top, most at the bottom. I could flip that around by going to descending order. Now I have the most at the top, least at the bottom, but I do prefer by folder name that's alphabetical order, but I don't want them in reverse alphabetical order. So I'll go to ascending and you can see that they're now in ascending or they're in, I'm sorry, they're in alphabetical order. That's just the way I like to do it. I, it's easier for me to find things uh, that way. Another new feature is you could now create virtual copies. Uh, if you are in the catalog module, just right click right on the image and then go down to create virtual copy. You also notice that there's a keyboard shortcut on a Mac. It's a command apostrophe. I'm going to assume that on a PC, it's control apostrophe. Uh, if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, uh, you could create a virtual copy using the same exact keyboard shortcut. So on my Mac, I'll hit command apostrophe. And you'll notice right next to it, it adds the virtual copy. You could tell that you have more than one of the same image because it will put this little virtual copy icon uh, there. So that you could see that there's version one and version two uh, right next to each other. So virtual copies are a nice feature. Uh, let's go down to this album. I have an album here, some images, so I'm going to show you some more features. I'm going to jump over to the edit menu or the edit uh, module, I should say. Uh, right off the bat, you may notice that at the bottom, there's a film strip. This is new. Uh, I like having the film strip down there. You could turn it off or on with this icon right there. I like it. Also, you could create a virtual copy here as well. Just click on these uh, three dots and you could create a virtual copy here. You also have the star ratings. You could give it here, or you could give it a pick flag or reject flag as well, or a favorite flag and a reject flag if you prefer uh, saying it that way. So I like the film strip, so I keep that on. Um, so it's really up to you. If you just want more room, just keep the film strip off. So that's that. Now, let's talk about some of the new editing features. Let's go to this image. They have a new feature that's called color transfer. It's in this creative section right here. Color transfer allows you to uh, take elements, color elements from a specific photo and copy those to another photo. Uh, so if you see maybe an Instagram photographer and you really like the color palette that that photographer uses when they color grade their images, you know, borrow one of their images and use it as reference so it will then color grade your images in a similar way. For example, to do it, just click on reference selection. You'll notice there's a few here for you to sample, but you could add your own. I'm going to click the little plus sign. And on my desktop, I have two different images. I have an image of a uh, still from the movie, The Joker. See, it's got kind of this kind of green look. And then we have a still from Asteroid City. And you can see that's kind of this orange, really warm tones. So let's go to the Joker. So again, it's got this kind of green color grading done to it. And I want to add it to this image. Just click open and it will take a second to do this. It, you could see down here, it's saying applying color transfer and it did it. So it's very easy, very quick. Well, I shouldn't say very quick because sometimes it is a little slower, uh, particularly if your images are uh, really high resolution images and the image you're copying from is a higher resolution, it may take longer to do. Um, also, it takes longer, I noticed, if you have a lot, if your image is busier, so you have a lot more uh, different elements in there. There's sky, trees, water, uh, buildings, people, then it takes a little longer to do as well. 
Now let's just go to another one uh, very quickly. Let's um, yeah, let's go to this one, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go to um, to the color transfer, and I'm going to click on reference selection. And now you'll notice it's here. Uh, I don't have to add it again, and I could even delete it off my desktop. I don't need to keep that reference image anymore. It's right here, so I could click on it to apply it, right? And then it gets applied. You see how it got applied. We'll close this down. Now we have some adjustments we could do. So for example, let me give you a before after before I do that. There's before and there's, it takes a second to kick in. There's after, there's before, there's after. Now, if I go and go to transition smoothing, I fiddled with this a little bit. I like it lower. And it takes a second to kick in, but you can see how it affects the color smoothing down. I can go up to a mount and push this up a little bit and give it more of this kind of green look and so on. So you could adjust things. You also could click on match similar objects colors. So things that it finds are similar, it will try to match better. This tends to take a little while. You'll notice down here it's giving you this kind of progress circle. I've noticed that this takes actually longer than when you apply it for the first time. So just let it do it since I clicked on it. And then you'll see the difference. And there it is. So that is something here. Let's try another one. Let's go to this image. And obviously that image of um, Asteroid City, which is a Wes Anderson film that has that real orangey look. I want to apply it to this. So I'm going to go to Color Transfer. And I'm going to go to Reference Selection, and I'm going to click the little plus sign, and it's Asteroid City right here. And to remind you what it looks like, it looks like that. And we'll click Open. And again, it will apply it. It will take a second or three uh, to apply. And once it does, uh, you'll see that this will have that look. And now I could increase the amount so it looks more like the Asteroid City look. I'm going to take Transition Smoothing down because I think that kind of looks better color smoothing down and I could click I'm not going to do it again because it does take a while uh, match similar objects colors so that the blue sky it will get matched a little better and anything that is similar will get matched a little better now if I click here again that is here now too so you have them uh, there's the Joker and there's Asteroid City if you do want to get rid of them you don't want them there go to this drop down if you wanted to, first of all, just show them all by themselves, you could go right there to custom. Those are just your custom ones that you added. If you'd like to go to just remove them all together, go to here and you could just take them both and just drag them in the garbage. Now they're not, I'm not dragging the ones from my desktop on the garbage. I'm just dragging the other ones. So if I reset this, this tool, I go to the drop down, you'll see they're not there anymore. But if I click the plus, they're still on my desktop. What happens is when you do add them, it takes them from your desktop and it puts them somewhere in their library. So they're there semi permanently uh, until you go here to this drop down and you remove them like I just did. So that's just something I wanted to mention just in case you want to get rid of them. Now, I want to go to this image and show you the last new feature that is in this version of um, of uh, uh, Luminar Neo, and that is color masking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I want to mask the sky. I want to make the sky look a little darker and a little more saturated. Now, there's all different ways you could do that. It does have AI masking where it could find the sky. But in some tricky situations, maybe that won't work properly, and the color masking might be better. So I'm going to go to the develop uh, tools here. I'm going to go to masking. You can see that they group the tools. You have the brush and the two gradients together. Then you have in the middle color and luminosity masking. And then below that you have the AI masks. So let's go to this new color mask. And when you do that, it will examine the image. And once it examines the image, it's going to give you an eyedropper. And with the eyedropper, you would click on a color in the image. So we're going to click on this blue sky, right? And you can see that it has a little magnifier there to help you click on exactly what you want clicked on. So like right there. And then it will take a second, but then you'll get this red like overlay. 
It's over-selecting, though, for me at least. It's selecting part of the clouds as well. Well, what you could do is you could go to this range and you could pull it to the left to reduce the selection. And let do it. I might not have clicked very well, but now that's pretty good. So now it's mainly, you can see where the red overlay is mainly on the blue sky. So once I have it selected with this color masking tool, I would go over to adjustments and then I could pull exposure down and then maybe go to color and increase saturation. So that's new in this version of Luminar Neo. So there's the new features. They're calling this the Big Fall Update. Um, most of them are UI type features, uh, including that smart search, um, which I like. So I like, I like everything they added. Uh, I thought it, it, you know, welcome additions. Uh, so there it is. That's uh, what's new and exciting. In this, the latest version of Luminar Neo. Again, that's version 1.21.1. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.